uh, I'm really humbled <clears throat> and glad to be a part of this uh, seminar. Uh, I really am really thankful to the Department of English, Sri, uh, Sri Achutaman Government College, Tissor, Kerala, and definitely Rezina Ma'am, whom I called B. Uh, today, as, uh, this, as, as it has been mentioned, that I shall be talking about Rabindranath Tagore through the lens of Shottojit Ray, an aesthetic discourse. Now, as Anima uh, rightly suggested, that we, I, I shall be talking about uh, two maestros of Bengal, or rather India, or maybe the world. Uh, this year also marks, as Razina Di said, uh, it's, it's a centenary year of Shottojit Ray. So I thought of uh, talking on this uh, topic uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Shottojit Ray and uh, Rabindranath Tagore are closely associated and hence, uh, like, uh, his impact, uh, Tagore's impact on uh, Ray and, uh, and, the, and, and the representation of Tagore's impact on Ray's work I would like to highlight in today's work, in today's speech, sorry. Uh, if there is any uh, question or something like that, I can address that uh, at the end. Uh, so let's start with it. Maybe uh, like I'll give a small introduction or maybe which will act as a prelude to my speech. Uh, everybody knows Tagore, everybody. Like uh, I guess uh, uh, he's a very, he's, he's the one of the most renowned person of the world. Uh, and, and we consider him to be a world citizen, even Satyajitri. Now, in a world of ever-changing tests, ever-tumbling values, and ever-shifting forms, the intellectual truth and moral beauty of Tagore's creations remains bright and untarnished, the very quintessence of the culture and civilization. His message has universal appeal, and hence he got the name Kavi Guru, uh, the gurus of all Kavis. Uh, or even he is called the Bishokobi in Bengali, which is called the universal poet. His fame is international. The entire life of this wonder-working man was cremated with the spirits of the muse and his blissful hypocrine of his poetry flowed untrammelted from his early adolescence to a week before his death at the age of 80. This itself is a rare, very rare phenomenon. This sparkling stream emerging from the strange depth has zigzagged uh, through the immense uh, tacts of a long career, echoing in the murmurs of the moods of the ever-changing landscapes. Never there has been a moment of stagnation, and every step towards has been for progress. The shuffling of an once useful mode of thought and expression for another coming up like a seasonal crop to embody the subtlety altered rhythm of a marching soul, as I may say. Uh, never for a while in the turmoil of his life or amidst the pattern shifts of his life, did Tagore allow a break in his songwriting. His writing remained throughout in his exquisite pattern and in this supreme evocative power, images of a great lyricism matchless in his profundity and opulence. This, uh, with this, I would like to uh, start my discussion about the influence of Tagore on Shottojit Ray and how Shottojit Ray has portrayed Tagore in his films. Specifically today, I shall be talking about uh, Shottojit Ray's films, which are based on Tagore's scripts. Uh, Ray has made three films based on Tagore's films, uh, Tagore's scripts, and he has used a couple of Tagore songs in those scripts, which are not a part of the main script but he has used those songs, Tagore songs itself, in those films. And my discussion would, you know, uh, move around in this uh, periphery, like Tagore text along with Tagore songs and the impact of those and the usage of those by Shotkojit Ray. Now, I might uh, talk about certain cultural theories and aesthetic theories and all those things I may keep on saying. But as this is a very you know, online virtual platform, so it, it might turn out to be very boring talking about so much of theoretical aspects. But uh, just, uh, just to inform uh, the audiences, I would like to say this aesthetic culture, the one that I'm talking about, is one of the most important statements of Grigory Lucas' philosophy of culture in the period prior to his departure from Hungary in 1912 to step into Hidelberg, his first public published first published in the journal Renaissance in 1910 and reprinted in 1913 in the essay collection to which it lent to the title Aesthetic Culture. 
the, the area that I'm dealing with. Though aesthetic experiences are frequent in modern life, there is, uh, there is as of yet no scientifically comprehensive theory that can explain what psychologically constitute such experiences. Okay, as, we, as I may quote uh, Leader and Belk, as they have said that there is no such, uh, you know, comprehensive theory to express aesthetic beauty. We can feel it, but it's very hard to express it. Uh, the further, you know, discussed by cognitive challenges of both the abstract art and other conceptual complexes and multidimensional stimuli requires an extension of previous approach to empirical aesthetics and present an information processing stage model of aesthetic processing. Now, according to this model, if I get just a little hint to the model, according to this model, aesthetic experiences involve five stages. Number one, perception. Number two, expli explicit classification. Number three, implicit classification. Number four, cognitive mastering. And the last one, evaluation. Now, I'm not going into details to all these discussions because it's going to be very boring. Let's get directly to the topic that I wanted to discuss, that is uh, Shotsujit Ray and all, and, and, and his uh, Tigor's usage. Now, the, what to tell about Shotsujit Ray? He is, as, as Tigor, he is also a world citizen. We all know he's a very renowned uh, film director of India. The, the Quixotic uh, Ray is one of the most celebrated directors of India, no doubt about it. As mentioned in the changing world of Shotsujit Ray, reflection of anthropology and history, as I may quote, his visual style fused the aesthetics of European realism with evocative symbolic realism, which he based on classic Indian iconography, the aesthetic and the narrative principles of rasa, the energies of sakti and sakta, the principles of dharma and the practice of darshadena and darshalena now this is a quite philosophical approach i just wanted to mention that uh, this the, i just quoted it from the book uh, the changing world of shotojit ray reflection on anthropology and history now uh, this unique amalgamation of self expression that recorded the ch uh, changing human condition expanding over four decades covering three periods of bengali history offering a fictional ethnography of a nation in transition from agriculture, feudal societies to a capitalist economy has been artistically portrayed in his films. His films show not only the emotional impact of the social, economic and political changes on the personal lives of the character, but also reflects the Indian declaration of independence and the period of industrializations and secularization of the 1950s and the 60s to rise the nationalism and the Marxism in the 1970s, followed by the rapid transformation of India in the 1980s. Uh, if Rabindranath Tagore was the ultimate cultural figure of India in the first half of the 20th century, that is the pre-independent India, the greatest cultural personality of the second half of the 20th century, that is the post-independent era, was undoubtedly Shottojit Ray. Ray was linked to Tagore through the Brahmo Shamaj movement, as well as his own studies as a student of Tagore's University of Shantiniketan. Ray was connected to Tagore through his father Sukumar Ray and the uh, grandfather Upendra Kesha Ray, both were renowned writers of Bengal and they were family friends of the Tagore families of Jora Shakur, Thakur Bari. According to Robinson uh, uh, in his article, Shottojitri, the Inner Eye, Tagore, he writes, Tagore's profound influence on his work was openly expressed by Ray. Ray recognized Tagore's prodigious influence in mentioning his personal sense of creative indebtedness, if I may say like this. If I may quote Shottojit Ray from his book, Our Films, Their Films, he says, I consider the three years I spent at Shantiniketan at the most fruitful period of my life. This was not so much because of the proximity to Tagore, who continued to remain inappro inapproachable, 
it was just that shantini ketan opened my eyes for the first time to the splendor of indian and far eastern art until then i was completely uh, under the sway of western art music and theater uh, shantini ketan made me the combined product of east and west that i am as a filmmaker i owe as much to shantini ketan as i do american and european cinema so this is the portion that i have quoted from shotojit ray's book, uh, film, book our films and their films where he openly says that he is indebted to tigore and the values and the exposure that he got to know while he was as a student of shantini ketan for 3 years tigore's aesthetic influence was such intense that eventually re led to make three films from the poet's vision as i said in the beginning of my speech the re has made uh, three films on tigore's scripts teen konna in 1961 is a collection of three short films adopted three short stories adopted from tigore's short story concerning lives in rural bengal charu lota 1964 is a rendition of the novel noshtonir written in 1901 a short novel with the theme of women's in in emancipation and ghore baide in 1984 from a novel of the same name tells a story of the human condition and relationships in the time of the nationalist movement not only tigor texts but his songs also had a huge impact on ray he has used tigor songs couple of times in his films with such a background and body of the work my lecture shall look into specifically i'll i'll look into two films because due to the paucity of the time and i want to really discuss in details i'll i'll specifically talk about two films based on tigor text the first one being charu lota and the second text uh, second one being ghore baide uh, and try to analyze the usage of tigor text and tigor music which we know which is uh, commonly known as robindra songeet in those films respectively now uh tigor himself felt that his songs would outlive everything else that he had written we know tigor has written uh, uh everything possible on earth like he has written short stories he has written novels he has written dance dramas he has composed songs he has composed poetry and in, he has uh, even he has written essays and everything but he himself said that out of his all writings he believed that his songs would outlive everything and to a letter and if i would like to mention a, a letter which he had written tigore had written to william rothenstein uh, mentioning this he writes i i will quote i know the artistic value of my songs through though they will not be known outside my province and much of my work will be gradually lost i leave them as a legacy such a far sighted man he at that point of writing he 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 thought that his songs will be will serve him the legacy of it and definitely it is doing so uh in in bengal like uh, if you, if you, if you ever come to bengal you will you will always come into you know a exposure to rovindra songeet you have to like uh, there is no not a single day in bengali culture when we do not uh, sing tigor song or play tigor songs or there is not a occasion where we can we do not play tigor songs or even quote rovindranath tagore his songs are found in the films of virtually every sensitive bengali filmmaker why only bengali filmmaker even in bollywood also we can find his songs in hindi translations of the songs the music of the in the music of tagore the creations of notes and everything has been you know uh, definitely used in the in bollywood mainstream movies also Now, Tim Robindra Shongit, as a, as they are known, started getting assimilated in cinema ever since 1930s, and the coming of with the coming of the sound, when the film Indian film industry flourished, often used songs and dances to encounter the domination of Hollywood cinema and successfully managed to marginalize it. <coughs> Sorry. Now, in Bhomik, uh, is Bhomik has written in, uh, if I may quote him. like ruper kalponir jhor uh, published from uh, anandu publishers he writes the use of tigor songs in films is related to the fact that in the popular imagination rovindra songeet has come to represent the ultimate symbol of bengali identity 
and a sophisticated expression of sublime spirituality within a completely secular framework connecting our own modernity with the ancient philosophy of Upanishads, rightly mentioned by Abhomik. Even conformist skeptics are, are known to surrender to the emotional power of his songs. It may be due to the realization that Rabindra Shangit is neither pure melody nor pure poetry, but a third independent identity where it is the finest moments poetry fuses completely with music and music into poetry, and the two, which may not have fully stood up on their own, now become inseparable. Rabindranath's songs, uh, numbering 2,232 specifically, he has composed 2,232 songs, are combined in the collection called Gita Bitan, published in 1941, arranged according to parjais. Now, parjais means themes. It is not arranged in chronology. Uh, broadly, these songs, uh, all these songs are classified under different categories. Now, I'll just give, uh, give a hint to that because of the people who are not abreast with the Tagore songs so much. Uh, now, there are different classification or in Bengali, which we call parjais. It's basically the jars. Okay. Now, or the themes that we talk about. The first theme is puja or devotional many of which has been composed in the Dhrupad structure for the Brahmo congregations. Number two, category, the second category, Prem or Love, which could be equally addressed to the Divine and the Beloved. Number three, Prakiti or Seasons, the dramatic variety and the changing moods of nature which moved him intensely. The fourth one, Anushthanik or Occasion-specific, where he had special songs to capture the mood of assorted as occasions such as marriage, birthdays, deaths, traveling, harvesting, uh, then different celebrations in the school's calendars of Shantini Ketan, be it Brikkharopon or, or Nabobosho or whatever. The fifth category, Swades or Patriotic, which included songs to inspire and encourage patriotic feelings during the freedom struggle. And the last, is called the bichitru or the miscellaneous, which, which, which could not be, you know, put into any other prior categories. He termed them as miscellaneous or bichitru. And there is another category which is called nritunatu. Nritunatu means which is dance dramas and the lyrical pleas. So this is the overall structure and the categorization of Tagore songs. Time and ago, again, uh, Ray has surrendered himself to Tagore when selection of songs for his films are to be considered. Music has always been an intriguing part of his art of storytelling. Song never appeared superficial or artificially implanted in the stories, rather songs added richness of his cinematic creations. He himself was the music director for majority of his films and even received numerous awards for music direction and even including national awards. Ray has used Robindra Shungit in films such as Kanjun Jangha, uh, Charu Lata, Ghore Bairi, as I said. Shottojit Ray, uh, in, 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 in his, in, once he wrote, uh, the title of his writing was Some Reflection on Robindra Shungit. He had written an essay on it, Some Reflections on Robindra Shungit, which was published in Purubi, A Miscellaneous of Memory of Rabindranath Tagore, edited by Krishna Dotto and Andrew Robinson, where he writes, as a Bengali, I know that a compo as a composer of a song, Tagore has no equal, not even in the West. This is this like this is the uh, if I if I'm quoting Shottojit uh, Ray from the essay, some reflections of Rovindra Shungit. Now uh, both the films Charu Lata, which was in 1964, and Ghore Bairi, 1984 explore Tagore's interpretation of triangle love story under the backdrop of a rural urban division, colonization, women's emancipation, and nationalism. I hope uh, uh, most of the people are abreast with these films. Uh, if not, then I'll let you make understand little uh, a storyline of it, but I really don't want to go in details with the storylines. The people who have seen these uh, films or have heard about these films, they can relate to what I'm saying. 
now, uh, as, I was, as, well, as I was saying, in order to transcript Tagore's works across time and media, Ray adopted a poetic liberty in his technique of rendition. Just as Tagore exercised his discussions in written mode, Ray's audiovisually expanded uh, the poet's vision in filmic mode and perhaps prolonged the poet's argument further than the original. Charulata is a rendition of the novel Nashtunir, written in 1901, a short novel with the theme of woman emancipation, as I was saying. Ghori Baire, from a novel of the same name, tells a story of her human conditions and relationships in the time of a nationalist movement. Perhaps Tagore and Ray felt aliens at home, both confined in between British colonialism and Indian nationalism, an imprisoned condition of Bengali identity, which Tagore's elegantly uh, uh, expressed in his widely appraised essays on nationalism in India. As uh, Omurtu Sen, uh, the, in Argumentative uh, India, writings on Indian culture, history, and identity, uh, he writes, as he puts it, uh, I may quote Omurtu Sen, the tragedy, as Tagore saw it, came from the fact that, uh, that what was truly best in the British's own civilization the upholding of dignity in human relationships has no place in the British administration of this country. So Tigor was caged in his own house. He felt so at, at the, uh, in, in, under the situation of British colonial system. Nevertheless, the rigid dichotomy between tradition and modernity as well as Indian and European modernity takes it impossible to make, to take full account of the constant station that the, that the animation, the creative efforts to fashion a vibrant culture and politics of colonial modernity. Now, uh, in the sense, uh, Ray and Tagore's fusion of Indian and European aesthetic values Test the fallacy of authentic traditional cultures as conflicting to hybrid modern cultures while strengthening the capacity of challenging Western colonial power in the arena of politics and the state. Seen in this totality, the work of the poet Tagore and the film director Ray articulates a kind of self-critical historical consciousness as the means of actively raising a collective self-awareness between the past and the future. Here, uh, with this philosophy, we can, we can relate to the notion with, where Ramsier uh, has uh, said the same, same uh, you know, philosophy, stating that between what is done and what can be done uh, from the politics of aesthetics. The same, same philosophy, actually, uh, basically. They were, they, the Ray and Tagore was stuck in between what is done and what can be done. Now, uh, if I if I move on to the films now, uh, uh, the rest of then then let's start with uh, Charulata. Charulata is uh, perhaps uh, the most well analyzed race movie. It is also one of the filmmakers once admitted he considered the best among his work, the one with the fewest flaws, to quote him, he said, it is the only film with the fewest flaws. It was based on Tigor's novel, as I said, Nosh to Need, The Broken Nest, written in 1901, whose inspiration was Tigor's emotional and intellectual bonding with his sister-in-law, Kadomburi Devi, the wife of his brother, Jyotirindranath Tigor. The film reflects the inner void in the life of Charulata, whom we, in the film we call Charu, a deserted housewife, and the affection she seeks in the company of Omul, her, father, her husband's cousin. As their relationship crosses the boundaries set by the Victorian era morality, if I may say, based captured by the two songs, Fule Fule Dhole Dhole and Amichini Go Chini Tomare, 
and their con concert and conversation with the rich allusions to Bonkim Chandra Chattopadhyay, another renowned writer of Bengal, the viewers find himself developing attachment to the undefinable bonding between Charu and Omol. Now the novel Ghore Baire, <coughs> sorry, the novel Ghore Baire, written in 1916, a decade after Lord Curzon's decision on and the boycott movement that accompanied it expressed uh, Tagore's vexation at narrow notions of nationalism. It is told from the point of view of the three lead protagonists, the nobleman Nikhilesh, who refuses to boycott foreign goods, but is perhaps more concerned to the cause of the downtrodden than even the ardent nationalists, Bimola, his wife, for whom the Swadesi movement offers a chance to have greater interaction with the outside world, and Nikhilesh's friend, Shondeep, whose slender sense of nationalism has a certain selfish viewpoint to it, that he can even murder someone from a different political ideology. As Robinson, Ray's biographer, uh, documented, Sandeep is no revolutionary, though uh, the rousing nature of Kishore Kumar sung Bidhiri Badhun Katibetumi Amun Shoktiman, the song, which after which Bimola is inexorably like uh, he she is uh, like drawn towards him by uh, as 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 i may suggest like she gets really interested in uh, shondeep this foremost objective is to attain power uh, which involves an element of dominance and his supposedly revolutionary entities to do little to puff his fierce ambitions so these are the two storylines of the films that I selected for the discussion. People who are abreast or who have watched these films, they can uh, definitely relate to the facts. Uh, but people who haven't watched it, so for them, I have just given the plot of it. I'll not go in details with the series. And I request you to please go through uh, these movies. They are wonderful creations, both as novels and as uh, films. Now. Uh, I'll discuss over here, uh, I'll specifically talk about, uh, as I was talking, basically, uh, Robindro Shongit, uh, 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 Robindro Nath songs. As I mentioned, there are two songs in the film Charulata. One is Fule Fule, and the other is Amitini Gochini Tomare. Now, if I may discuss the Fule Fule song sequence, and its impact in the film, and the usage of the song in the film, and thereafter the cinematic misinsane that was created, with the usage of the song. <clears throat> a very well-constructed sequence uh, in the film, worthy of mention, is a swing sequence. People who are, uh, you know, a, a cinematic buff or like who are really interested in cinema and classic cinema and all those things, or who consider themselves to be students of film studies or has been a part of different discourses of films, okay? They are quite impressed about this, the sequence that I'm talking about. It's called the swing sequence, one of the best cinematic moment or the best cinematic renowned and the talked about or discussed cinematic scenes, the swing sequence from the film uh, Charu Lata, okay? In, in which, uh, like, which comes like, the Charu comes to the unprehended, uh, like unpredicted uh, apprehension of a dormant attraction towards Omul, his uh, husband's uh, cousin. Uh, like the eye of the viewer are stuck to Charu swinging while he sits, while she sits on the swing that moves back and forth. Later Charu's point of view is shown oscillating with the song as he looks at Omul while simultaneously singing Chigor's Fule Fule Dhole Dhole Ray deliberately uses Madhumi Mukherjee, the character who was playing the role of Charu, Madhumi Mukherjee's gaze and an array of facial expressions to denote complex and subtle changes in Charu's emotion towards Omul. Charu gives the viewer just a slight hint of a smile that gently transforms into shock over the realization that, sh that her love has been able to take her by surprise. Finally, Ray's interesting use of the movement of the swing 
trapped between two points on a tree and the sense of a dizziness accompanied with its mirrors, Charu's state of mind as it deals with the new dilemma and hesitation moving towards towards forward and backward such a nuanced representation of the complex nature of familial relationship in the bengal renaissance would not have been possible without ray's clever filmmaking techniques and handling of deliberate subjects now who haven't watched this scene i it is very much available in the youtube you can just go and search for the swing scene in uh, Charulot, or you can just write Fule Fule Dhole Dhole and the sequence comes in. Now the text of the song, uh, like basically I would like to go for a, a discussion about the text. What does the song mean? Why the song was used there? Okay. Uh, now it was like this, the song goes like this. I will first say the Bengali and then I'll translate, uh, then I'll give, the, I'll talk about the translation of that song. Now the lyrics goes like this. Fule fule dhole dhole bohe ki mridu bai toti ni hin lolo tule kal lole chuliya jai and the two tune is like this Fule fule dhole dhole bohe ki mridu bai toti ni hin lolo tule kal lole chuliya as you see the tune, and just imagine the swing movement. If you are on a swing, you are oscillating to and fro, to and fro. Now the tune of this song, just see, it also oscillates to and fro. Fule, fule, dole, dole, bohe ki ba, miru bai. Now this oscillation is cinematically translated to Charu's uh, you know, turmoil in, his, in her heart, where she gets a shocking realization that she is in love with Omol. Okay? But this is quite beyond the familial or the societal con no notions, because she is already married. Now, this song and, and uh, like the tune, from the tune's perspective, I just wanted to make you understand the oscillation of the tune with the oscillation of the uh, uh, of the emotions in Charu's uh, inner, inner space, okay? Now let's go, uh, uh, you know, this song, uh, this particular song, Fule Fule Dhole Dhole, was composed by Tagore for his dance drama, Karl Brigoya, in 1882. The tune of the song is loosely based on the Scottish melody, He Bang So Dune, song written by Robert Burns in 1791. Now, if I go to the English translation of the song, uh, as I may quote uh, at the translation by Anjun Ganguly, uh, it says, flowers stray to and fro, touch each other, blows light breeze, river water departs with noise, waves eventually ease, sings sweetly lark hidden in the bushes of the tree, with my heart I feel sad extremely, it wanders me. I'll repeat, I'll repeat once more. Flowers sway to and fro, touch each other, blows light breeze. River water departs with noise, waves eventually ease. Sings sweetly lark hidden in the bushes of the tree. Why in my heart I feel sad extremely, it wanders me. It is if an attempt to interpret the sense of the song is initiated, one could summarize the content as a mournful lamentation of a person whose soul is you know, perpetuated by pathos amidst joyful elements of natural beauty. This rhetorical expl explanation, like a pran kore hai hai, definitely invokes uh, accumulation of F affects such as longing, pain, desire, while at the same time, any Bengali would also identify a sense of ecstasy that such an effect simultaneously that such such an effect simultaneously you know produces. The more interesting aspect here is that the object or origin of such pathos is unspecific, and therefore the last line connotes a sense of incomprehension or inarticulacy, which arguably is a significant probe 
referring back to Tigor's text itself. Now, uh, from Chatterjee's reading romance and inquiry concerning representation of love in Bengali literature and cinema, where he has mentioned, he has mentioned the sequence and he has written, I'll quote uh, his hymn. He says, for a contemporary spectator, the object of lament is presumably consensical and clear. Charu has fallen in love. But the ironical aspect is that the literary narrative itself tries to dramatize the process of this very construction of love. I hope I have made you understand. I'm I have been capable enough to make you all understand what I want to see with this iconic uh, scene of Charulota and the usage of Tagore songs and, it, and its impact meaning. Now let me uh, move towards uh, the next song that, has, that I would like to mention from the same movie, which is uh, with the song called Ami Chini Go Chini Tomare. Okay, just excuse me. I just need to drink some water. Okay, let's continue. Hope this is not boring, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, uh, I hope I'm not sounding bo boring. Like, I have no clue. But uh, can just anyone say, like, whether it is boring or not, or people are understanding or not? Then uh, it should be so far. No, sorry, it's so interesting. Far. You've kept okay. us in pace. All that little bit. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, uh, the second song that I was talking about. Ami Chini Go Chini Tomare from the same film, Chalulata. The song sequence marks one of the best examples of the choreographed cinematography and screenplay. European Renaissance is considered to be the beginning of modernity. Bengali Renaissance therefore marks the journey of Bengal towards modernity. However, as it comes in terms of its own modernity, Bengali Renaissance is not necessarily the uh, mirror image of the European modernity. It is never. To capture the transition from tradition to modernity, Ray precisely presents the house, uh, the dressing sense, the props, specifically the piano, where Omol plays the piano in this particular song, and the lifestyles are rather pro-British or or influenced by British. If anybody can relate to the scene that I'm talking about, the, uh, the, all the props or, uh, uh, that, that, that you can see in this particular scene is so pro-British. Okay? In between such subtle backdrop of modernity, a luminous purview of the socially permissible, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this word in quotes, like socially permissible, playful affection between Bodhi that is sister-in-law, and Devar, that is brother-in-law, is aesthetically crafted in the song Ami Chini Go Chini Tomare that Omol sings for his sister-in-law. It is the only one song which is used with full instrumentization, like with all instruments and like uh, uh, real, like the one that we are used to in mainstream uh, films. The rest of the songs are like without music. Only this is the song where a piano and everything has been used. The instrumentization has been used. Uh, <coughs> sorry. In, in a rare gesture, Ray used Kishore Kumar for this track instead of many of instead of any established Rogindo Shongit singer. Because at that time, you know, Rogindo Shongit was copyrighted, and you have to get permission from Vishwabharati and all those things. And people uh, at that and the directors who used Rogindo Shongit at that point of time you know, always restricted themselves to the spe specific Rovindra Shongit singers, okay, who used to sing uh, Rovindra Shongit because P at that point of time, it was believed that Rovindra Shongit, to sing Rovindra Shongit, you need to have a special, uh, you know, training, special vocal quality, special a way of pronouncing words and, the and a special way of singing, actually. But Ray, Ray completely broke that image. And for the very first time, he is using Kishore Kumar, a non-trained Rovindra Shongit singer, a non-trained singer rather, who was not known as Rovindra Shongit singer at all, he uses Kishore Kumar for this song. Okay, and though for that he was highly criticized, you can find ample of write-ups, and uh, uh, you know um, you can find ample of writings uh, on this particular issue that why uh, uh, 
Ray has used Kishore Kumar and hence followed like the criticisms of the eth you know, you know, cultural eth uh, critics and all those things. So he was highly criticized. But, uh, you know, uh, what uh, he said that uh, the, the reason behind using Kishore Kumar was his clarity of voice. As he mentioned in the in, in, in scrolling audio master, three moments and three mo uh, moments of liberation of Prajit Ray's where uh, it is written. And, and same way, after 20 years, in the film Ghore Bairi, again, he uses Kishore uh, 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 Kumar again as a singer. And incidentally, again, the actor was Shomitra Chatterjee. In the Tarulaka also, Amol was played by Shomitra Chatterjee. In the and, and and in his lip uh, and he uh, and Kishore Kumar and the song of Kishore Kumar was used uh, in his lips. And after twenty years, the next film that I'm going to discuss is Ghare Bairi, which again a Tagore song was used, again sung by uh, Kishore Kumar and again uh, featured on uh, Sh Shomitra Chatterjee. Now the lyric, as I was talking about in the previous song, again here also, like it says, "Ami chini go chini tomare ogo videshni." Now this song, uh, uh, this song was composed on 11th September 1895 under Prem Porjai or Love Theme. The poet has mentioned this song in his writings in his memoirs, Jibong Sriti, in the essay titled Gran Shambhandi Prabhundho, an essay on music. He has, he has written it. I, I'll, I'll quote that past pa paragraph where he has mentioned this song. I can remember only as a single line of the song from that I heard from long back in childhood. To my Bideshini Shajiye Dileke. It was a beautiful portrayal and had created a constant buzz in the years. Fascinated by the rhyme, once I tried to produce a song. Following the tune, I wrote, Ami chini go chini tomare ogo Bideshini. I have no idea what could have resulted if the tune was absent at that time. Although by virtue of the tune, an impressive image of a foreign lady emerged, my mind was inclined to believe that a foreign lady must roam about within our reality. A lady from the flip side of an unknown mysterious ocean, often visible through the autumn mornings and serene nights, her existence felt within my soul, the echo of her voice too as it appears, I have heard. I would sail across with the help of my tune in front of this mesmerizing universal door of the lady and would say, Bhubanu Bhumiya Sheshe, Ami Eshechi Tomari Deshe, Ami Othiti Tomare Dare, Ogu Bideshini. Now, the English translation goes like this Oh, the lady from abroad, you are known to me. You stay far away across the ocean. I have seen you in the autumn morning, in the tender, beautiful nights. Seen you within my heart, O oh, the lady. Pressing my ears into the sky, I have heard you song. O oh, the lady from abroad, I have offered my soul. Roaming all around the globe, finally, I have reached a new state. Guest at your door, I am, O oh, the lady from abroad. Now the song goes like this. Ami chini go chini tomare ogo bideshini. Bideshini means uh, the lady from distant land. Tumi tha ko shindhu pare ogo bideshini. Ami chini go chini tomare ogo bideshini. Now the tune goes like this. <coughs> Now, in Ray's film, Omul addresses this song to his sister-in-law sister -in with whom he is in love, an exotic creation in his eye, creature in his eyes, yet living in the inner sanctum of the same house as himself. So also in this song written on the boat to Singapore, uh, Singapore, when Tagore was traveling to Singapore, when he was traveling to boat, he has written this song. The tune of the foreign flute raises the most intimate images of the home, the homeland and the alien land. The home and the world are one, as he sees. And, and, and he has rightly mentioned in his uh, memoir, Jibon Sriti, as he says, at the end, 
we come down to and surrender at your feet. We have come to your door. Please accept us. Now, Bhubano Bhumiya Sheshe, Ami Eshechi Tomari Deshe, Ami Otheti Tomari Dare, Ogo Videshini. Roaming all around the globe, finally I have reached a new state. Guest at your door I am, O oh, the lady from abroad. This is how the song goes, and this is how the it is picturized in the film where Omol sits on a piano and sings for his sister in law Charu. And Charu comes and gives a beetle leaf, the pan, and there is a slight, you know, uh, a, a, a movement of love, like where Charu gives, you know, gives uh, the pan to Omol, then Omol refuses, then Charu takes it. So it's just a very, very, you know. Uh, if you watch the film, you can relate that scene. It, it it shows such a subtle emotion of love. You will love to see that, and you know. And then they start dancing with one another, like a, a European style kind of a ball dance in the scene. Though not typically ball dance, but a gesture of so. And then at the end, uh, he says, oh, uh, in, the, uh, in instead of the word ogo uh, he almost says ogo bo thakuroni. Okay, Ogo Bothakuroni, Bothakuroni in Bengali means sister-in-law. Okay, so we, he used he he he, he is, you know substituted the word at the last at the end of the song uh, of uh, like Ogo Bideshini by Ogo Bothakuroni. So this is how the scene goes. Now uh, uh, I'll I'll come to the last portion. I maybe maybe I don't know. It's been one hour, almost one hour. I'm talking. Oh, I'll I'll uh, I'll talk. I'll, I'll just come to the last film that I was about to discuss. It's Bidhir uh, Vadhon Kartipe to me, the song from uh, Ghore Baire. As I said, the Ghore Baire is a film which was written under the nationalist movement, the boycott movement, under the Lord Karzun's uh, act and all those things. Uh, the 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 script was written under such a uh, backdrop, and the film also rightly portrays that era of the, of of India. Uh, visionary Shottajit Ray is an ever, is an, in an ever changing world, like shuttle the aesthetics of European realism with the reminiscent symbolic realism. Now, Amartya Sen is uh, one of the opinion in his argumentative India uh, that Ghore Baire is both the novel and the film. Uh, Tagore and Ray had expressed their respective view of patriotism. Now, Sen quotes, and if I, I can quote uh, uh, Amartya Sen. He says, I'm willing to serve my country, but my worship, I reserve the right, which is far greater than my country. To worship my country as a god is to bring a cure upon it. Now, the song, Bidhir Badhun Katbe Tumi, used by Ray in the film Ghore Baire, where Shondip, the charismatic supporter of the patriotic Swadesi movement, uh, who appears, always appears in traditional appears, sing this song. Now, the lyrics goes like this. Bidhir Badhun Katbe Tumi Amun Shoktiman Tumiki Amun Shoktiman. Now, uh, this song, uh, Tagore uh, composed this song in 1905. Now, if you have to remember, 1905 is the year when uh, the partition of Bengal was commissioned. Okay, so and Tagore was writing ample of songs to protest against this movement. So, this is one of the songs. Uh, which he had composed at that time frame. And uh, uh, soon after Lord Carson, the viceroy of British India, partitioned, belong, uh, partitioned, partitioned Bengal uh, along religious lines under Swadeshi uh, you know, uh, movements and all those things happened. And this song was written under Swades Parjai, that is the patriotic theme. He tossed a challenge to the British, saying, no matter how powerful the authority, the weak will gain strength and rise. Now, this is the main theme of the song. Where he's questioning or he's, uh, you know, uh, challenging uh, to the British rule, saying that no matter how powerful the authority is, the weak will gain strength and rise. Now, the English translation of the song goes this way: Are you strong enough to revert the course of dense, uh, destiny? Do you think yourself strong enough? Rein up, rein your ups and downs, audacity. Do you think yourself audacious enough? To drag someone behind to hold down forever. You lack such power, nor can you endure such hall. You rule hard, weak ones resist harder. Greater you may become, greatest is the Almighty. Wreck our might, you pave our way to peril. 
Loading and you must down you crucial. Now this is the song, the, the English translation of the song. And the tune of the song goes like this. <clears throat> Bidhiri badhon kaat be tumi agon shokti man tumi ki emni shokti man Bhama der bhanga gara tumar hati Amon obhi man tumi ki emni shokti man Bidhiri badhon kaat be tumi agon shokti man tumi ki emni shokti man So the tone tune goes like this. Now, uh, the Swadisi movement beginning with the partition of Bengal as we were saying in 1905 and the continuing till 1908, targeting the economic creep of the British rule in India, reacting to monopolies of productions through which the British were able to sell Indian goods at highly boosted prices. A large group of people in Bengal close to boycott foreign goods, instead preferring to buy domestically produced ones. That's what this means, like uh, the people's own country here by extension refers to self-sufficiency. Now, Tigor's novels, Ghore Baire, The Home and the World, written in 1916, is particularly poignant in this depiction of the Muslim traders harassed into giving into the demands of the public to burn their stocks of British goods in a highly, you know, spectacularized, ritualistic manner. Uh, the film and particularly the song talks are revolting against the British rule and invoking the power of strength among the fellow countrymen. Now, in the film sequence, when, uh, uh, when this song is picturized, now what happens is, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, when Sondeep, Sondeep is singing this song, now uh, the, this, uh, he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to imbibe the passion of Swadisi movement, the passion of nationalism among his friend and his uh, friend's wife. And hence, Bimola also gets you know, excited and he gets uh, regenerated and with the idea of Swadisi movement. And then in the subsequent uh, scenes in the films, we see that Bimola also takes active participation in the Swadisi movement and all these things. Now with this, we come to the uh, almost to the end of the discussion. Uh, now, Indian scholars, film scholars, uh, like I would quote at the end, uh, like I'd like to quote um, Indian film scholar Monica Biswas commented that Charulata is about growing up. And that is the story of an Indian woman growing into modernity and into subjectivity. In the light of her comment, we also see Ghore Baide as an expansion of Tigor's experiment in this subject. Through violent and painful events, Bimola is also growing up with her emancipated feminism, femininity, and with a, and into a sense of citizenship. The fate of Charu is left uncertain, both in Tagore's text and race film. But as Bimola in race film, we eventually see her emerging into the light as a widow. Now, amid such intriguing storylines, the songs Fule Fule, Dole Dole, and Vidhir Badon had play has been aptly used. According to Ray, Tego's songs, all the quintessentially Bengali, are very original. Uh, he writes, like according to the eminent writer Buddha De Bose, uh, he has once written uh, on an essay uh, called The Poetry of Rabindranath Tagore, which was published in Vishwabharati Quarterly, where he says Tagore is definitely the world's greatest lyric genius. Now, there are almost a mystic realism, a realization in Tagore that, uh, that he was uh, composing songs at the behest of a superior will force for serving a larger purpose. When he was seized when, uh, by, the, by these musical energies, words and lyrics poured forth unbidden, and he remained surprised at what he had himself composed. The unique quality of Robindra Shongir is its evocative flavor. Even hardcore atheist ideologies and doctrinaries in Bengal and India can have no quarrel with Tagore songs. As celebrated filmmaker Ritti Ghatok, we know Ritti Ghatok. So Ritti Ghatok puts in an interview shortly before his death in 1976 uh, with Andrew Rob uh, Robinson, who was the biographer of uh, Shottoji Three. Like he says, I cannot speak without Tagore. He has understood what I am. And he has put in all the words, I read him and I find that all has been said and I have nothing new to say. It just cannot be helped. You can be angry with him, you can criticize him, but in the final analysis, you will find 
that he has the last words. With these few few words, I would like to conclude. And definitely, Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, I, I, my personal experience with Tagore is like that: when you are happy, when you are sad, when you are anything like any complex human emotion, just dive into Tagore. There is always a solution to it. That is my personal experience with Tagore. Uh, I, I request you all to please uh, at least be abreast with a little bit of Tagore writings and rays. And this is also a rays centenary year. So that's all for today. I